welcome to another episode of farm your yard. i'm your host, carrie. thanks for joining us today. today. we are out here at columbia's agriculture park in our planting for the pantry production field so if you've ever driven by the agriculture park or the veterans urban farm, you might have seen what you see behind me now rows of vegetable beds covered by this white fabric. and you might see that and think to yourself what's going on there? what is up with that? so in today's video we're going to go over what insect netting is uh, how you use insect netting in your own garden and why you should use insect netting in your garden. so let's get started. first of all, what is insect netting? well i've got an extra roll right here and it is just a lightly woven kind of nylon fabric and it's loosely woven enough to let air and wind and rain and all the sunlight through but it's tight enough the weave is tight enough so that butterflies and moths beetles and true bugs and even birds can't physically come near our vegetable garden we get these from agricultural supply centers online but they come in really large rolls that are like hundreds and hundreds of feet long and 10 feet wide sometimes so they're not very applicable to a backyard garden so in your backyard garden if you want to replicate this uh, gardening trick i would recommend you use the fabric called tulle which is like what a wedding veil is made out of and i actually have some with me right here so this is tulle that I purchased from like a local hobby center. The weave is not exactly the same on this fabric as it is with the insect netting, but it's definitely good enough for a backyard garden and it has a pretty good lifespan and is way more economical on a backyard garden scale than trying to purchase insect netting. So all of the netting that you see behind me is covering lettuce. But we also use insect netting a lot uh, with plants that are in the brassica family, which is a really large and really important family uh, that humans eat a lot of. So that includes kale and broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, turnips, radishes, rutabaga. It's really huge and humans love to eat it. Also, insects love to eat it. And we have some pretty serious insect pests uh, on one of the most important crops that we grow out here, which are collard greens. So we use insect netting all season long to protect our collard greens from three main pests, the cabbage looper, the cabbage worm, and the harlequin bug. So because we eat the vegetative part of the collard green, like the leaf, um, we can keep it on the entire growing season from April or May all the way to October or November. And we just uncover it when we want to harvest it and then cover it right back up. Keeping it covered with the insect netting all season long protects it and reduces the amount of spraying we have to do for those insects. So now that you know what insect netting is and how you can use a tool fabric in place of insect netting in your own garden, let's talk about how you use it. Now we're in the demonstration garden of the Ag Park and I just planted these four kohlrabis earlier today. So kohlrabis are in the brassica family with kale and collards and radishes and all of those things. And so they are susceptible to all of the same pests. So since I just planted these, I want to cover them right away because once they're planted in the, in the garden, the insects that are drawn to them just sense them and start coming. So if I don't cover them right away and I come back later and cover them, I might accidentally trap some of the pests in with the crops, which is like the exact opposite of what I want to do. So I'm going to bring my tool out and I'm going to cover these kohlrabi and the wind is kind of helping me. And then I want to weight it down all along the length. So there's no like holes flapping or there's no like loose ends, which are just the one way that insects can get in. So I've got some rocks and I've got this piece of wood right here, like so. So now I've got my kohlrabi covered entirely with my tulle fabric. So you can see that although the wind is blowing through the hoop, uh, there's no just like openings for any of those little moths or bugs to fly in and then start eating my kohlrabi. 
So because kohlrabi, we eat the stem and the leaves of, I'm gonna leave this covering on its entire life and I won't take it off until I harvest it, which will be a couple months from now. I'm still gonna water with my hose through this fabric. The water will percolate through just fine. Um, the only time I might lift it up is if I need to hand weed anything around it. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep it nice and covered its entire life. So in addition to collard greens and kale and cabbage, we also use insect netting on things like cucumbers, which uh, we eat the fruit from. So when we use insect netting on cucumbers, we cover the plant right after we plant it, just like we do the collards and everything else, and we let it live and grow and thrive under that insect netting until it begins to flower. And once it flowers, we take the cover off and let the insect pollinators reach the bloom so that they can pollinate the flowers, which gives us the cucumbers. If we were to leave the insect netting over the cucumbers, even while they were blooming, we would get a lot fewer cucumbers than we would uh, if we take the netting off when they start to bloom. Now, although we're taking the netting off and exposing the cucumbers to the big pest that we're trying to keep away with insect netting, which is the cucumber beetle, the idea is that by the time we take the netting off, the plants are much larger, they're robust, they've been given ample time to get nice and strong and kind of defend itself against the cucumber beetle. So you might ask yourself, why do we invest in this insect netting instead of the certified organic sprays that are out on the market that do kill these insect pests? Well, insects play a really important role in our ecosystem. And as sustainable gardeners, it is important to help sustain insect populations, even if those are insect pest populations. So let's think about a simple food web to you know illuminate this example so the greens that are under this cover uh, the kohlrabi that we covered in the demonstration backyard garden are taking energy from the sun and growing nice and big with that energy from the sun then a cabbage moth flutters along lays an egg on that green and turns into a cabbage worm and that worm eats some of the leaf from the kohlrabi or the other greens now, a woodpecker that has a nest in the neighborhood flies down and eats that insect and feeds it to its young if it doesn't eat it right away. Woodpeckers are what's considered a keystone species, which means they provide really important services for other animals in our local ecosystem. Um, so a lot of other living things depend on these birds. Now, insects and Caterpillars in particular are really important food sources for woodpeckers as they like rear their young at this time of year. So again, as a sustainable gardener, it behooves me to uh, do my role in sustaining those caterpillar populations so that the woodpeckers can feed their babies so that they as a species can provide the services for all the other animals that live in our local ecosystem. So using insect netting as a gardener kind of saves you some time. So instead of spending your evening spraying to kill the cabbage moths and the cabbage worms and the cabbage loopers and the harlequin bugs, you're saving a lot of time by just having this net over your crops. And with that time that you saved, you can be focusing your energy on growing really healthy, robust vegetables, which is always the best first line of defense when it comes to protecting your plants from pests. And we'll talk about that in later videos. As always, thanks for joining us and I'll see you later. Bye.